Hey everyone, this is Dean with DCA Crypto. I have an interesting video for you guys today. For those of you out there who are new to crypto, or even if you're, if you, even if you've been in crypto for a while now, there's some things in this video that I want to cover for you to to let you know that you're still very early. If you're watching this video in 2024, you're early, and I'm going to show you why in this video here. So I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, smash that like button, and let's jump into it. All right, guys, I'm going to cover some things in this video that are going to make you so bullish on crypto that I don't know, you know, I don't want you going too crazy now, guys. So don't don't go Michael Saylor crazy and sell everything for Bitcoin. But I want to show you some things in this video to let you know that there are some things out there that are very early and crypto is one of them. Crypto is, you know, going to absolutely explode in the upcoming months and years and so on. So if you're watching this video, you're early. I want to jump into the charts here real quick and then I want to show you some things that I think you should be aware of to help you understand where we're at. All right, guys. So we're at currently 1.86 trillion market cap in crypto, which is absolutely nothing compared to the rest of the financial world. Bitcoin, it actually hit, you know, if we look at the chart here, it got rejected off 48,000. And see this uh, wick here, this downward wick from, from a bullish momentum. Same thing that kind of happened here. This typically means that we're going to get pushed back down again. Now, I'm not telling you to short Bitcoin, but being that we got rejected here at 48,000 again, unless we make another move up and get higher than this, there's a good chance that we could come back down. That's okay. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in the, in the long uh, in the long run in the big picture here. This doesn't matter. I want to show you the Bitcoin rainbow chart here. In the last bear cycle, we got all the way up into this yellow zone before we came back down. We're still in this green zone. We got to break above this and get in the light green zone. If we get in the light green zone by the time the halving comes, that's going to put us, you know, between fifty-one and sixty-seven thousand dollar Bitcoin by the halving. You know, if we were to get up in the yellow zone, then we're talking like new all-time high for crypto or for Bitcoin and crypto in general. But I don't, I don't necessarily see that happening by the halving. Uh, by the having, some people call it having, but it's having, having. Either way, you can call it. But usually, as you can see here, usually we get a correction after this having. We usually come up and come back down, and then we COVID hit here before the having last time. But we might have come up and then come back down. It's really hard to say what was going to happen last time. COVID kind of threw us off. So either way, it really doesn't matter. At some point, we're going to take off into the real bull run. So. If you're just getting into crypto now, you're still early, guys. This article here, Bitcoin ETFs, X, uh, B, GPTC now hold more Bitcoin than MicroStrategy. As you guys know, if you're familiar with crypto and Bitcoin, uh, if you're familiar with Bitcoin at all, you should have heard of Michael uh, Saylor by now. He, he and MicroStrategy were the largest holders of Bitcoin, I believe, or some of the largest holders of Bitcoin. 192,255 Bitcoin, and I think MicroStrategy had 190,000. So they just the ETFs just surpassed MicroStrategy's Bitcoin holdings, and this doesn't count the uh, Grayscale spot. Uh, yeah, excluding Gray Grayscale's GBTC because that that had Bitcoin before it, it was turned into an ETF. So they're not in, they're not even including that. So they say the concentration of the coins held by these entities is not a risk to the Bitcoin network. So I want to jump into this video here and just play a, a quick bit of this video. And I got another one really quick for you to watch too. I'm just going to play a small portion of this. I think you guys should hear this and understand how big Bitcoin is in general, how important it is, and why it you know, is potentially the best investment in the world right now. Transformation. If you wanted to give education and erudition to 5 billion people, you can't do it with MIT and Harvard and libraries and books and teachers and professors. You need to do it with digital books and digital education. You need YouTube and iBooks, and that's why Google and that's why Apple are, are exploding in value. If you want to give wealth to 5 billion people, Brian, you can't do it with gold. You can't do it with land. You can't do it with buildings. You can't do it with 20th century stocks. You can't do it with collectibles and parts. You can't do it with diamonds. 
Those are 20th century property. You can give 10% of the people wealth that way. You can give 10 or 20% of the people wealth with banks and stock exchanges. If you want to give 5 billion people wealth, you need to give them digital property. You need to give them digital gold or an open monetary protocol running on a $50 Android phone. And that's why I say often Bitcoin is hope. So basically what Michael Saylor is saying there is, you know, when we came, we became digital, you saw the internet explode because information was now available to a lot more people fast and you know right now they could get it at the tips of their fingers social media exploded you could communicate with people instantly online from distances away we have the same problem with money bitcoin is the solution to that problem it's digital gold digital money digital property people will be able to invest with it and they don't need thousands of dollars to invest in it they don't need millions of dollars they don't need a bank they don't need a contract they don't need anything other than a cell phone and they just need the cell phone and internet access and they can literally just put five dollars into bitcoin if they want and it's a store of value they don't need a specific amount because you can buy you know one one hundredth of a bitcoin you can buy a tenth of a bitcoin you can buy a thousandth of a bitcoin really doesn't matter what you put in you can buy as much or as little as you want so this makes it available to a lot more people on earth to store their wealth in digital form so bitcoin is the answer to that solution i want to play a quick clip of this video here this guy uh, this video is from altcoin daily props to them for posting this the other day this guy is very intelligent you know he was around and told everybody years ago that the internet was going to be massive and everybody ignored this guy and they told him no it's stupid most people don't even understand it he was right about the internet and now he's saying crypto is going to explode even more than the internet because it's going to be available to everybody not just you know some of the population out there the crypto is going to be the the solution for money for a lot of people so let's watch a quick clip of this video here in the background of this grand story there's another story that's playing out after 25 years of the internet it still takes three to five days to send money from here to a country that's not in Europe. It will still cost you 30, 40 US dollars to send money. And that's only if the country you're sending it to isn't a poor country, in which case it will cost far more and take far longer. A giant network of centralized, closed, corrupt systems that are sucking money out of the poorest people on this planet. In 2017, two and a half billion people do not have access to banking. That means they have zero access to banking, cash-based only, and that's only counting heads of household. Not their spouses, not their children. Clearly, they don't matter. That's according to the International Monetary uh, bank. Now, imagine what happens if you bring banking to an app, to a $20 Android, to everyone who has a smartphone. Three and a half to four billion people are on the internet today. Just over one billion people of those have banking, have full access to financial services. We're going to bring it to the other six billion fast. And this is going to change the world faster than the spread of cell phones. Imagine a $20 Android landing in a village in Kenya, and it's no longer just a communications device. It's a bank. Not a bank account, a bank. It can wire and receive funds from anywhere in the world. It can do lending or receive lending for a mortgage to buy seeds for a field to bring disaster relief. It can internationally connect every person on this planet, and we can do this within the next 10 years. The world will radically transform when you bring the capability of a broad economic inclusion to everyone in this world. Now, you would think that banks want to do this, You'd be wrong. It's not really profitable serving people who have little money, little connectivity, no access to ID in oppressed countries with terrible governments. Also, 
In most of those countries, the banks are criminals. They are criminal organizations, or really quite indistinguishable from the local mob. So how do we fix that? Up to now, the approach for all of these technologies, whether it was PayPal or any of the other technologies we've seen emerge in financial technology very, very slowly, was to carefully and politely ask for permission. Bitcoin is not asking for permission. We forgot to do that. And so we will proceed in banking the entire world without asking for anyone's permission. So if that doesn't make you bullish on crypto, I don't know what is. You know, this guy is absolutely right. We're still very early. Uh, you know, he's he's basically saying crypto is gonna probably like 100 x over the next 10 or so years because they're gonna be able to get these uh, technologies in the hands of like over six billion people that don't currently have any form of banking. So just imagine that only like he said like over one billion of the current people on the internet currently have a banking system. So that's absolutely insane. So if you're watching this video, you're very early. So you're not too late. Uh, yes, prices have come up in crypto recently, but in the long term, long scheme of things, if you you know if you just invest over time, and this isn't financial advice, guys. This is just you know where my head is going with this and what I personally believe in. Do your own research yourself. See if this is something that you believe in. This is something that I believe in. I can see where these guys are coming from, and I, I fully understand you know what they're saying and where they're going with this. But you do what you what you think is best for you in your financial situation. You know I'm not. I'm not Michael Saylor. I'm not borrowing money to put into crypto to invest in, you know, in Bitcoin and borrowing to invest in Bitcoin. I'm not that crazy. I am putting investing money into crypto because I believe in it, but I think going into debt to do that is irresponsible. You know, you just got to be careful with what you're doing so you don't put yourself in a bad financial situation because crypto is risky and anything can happen. But I think in the long uh, term scheme of things, Crypto is going to pretty much explode over time. Now, it's going to take some time, sure, but eventually we're going to get there. And you're likely going to see Bitcoin probably in the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars down the road. Not in the next few years, but down the road. Sure, maybe Bitcoin gets up to 100, 100 some thousand next year. That's very possible. And then, you know, eventually we get up higher from there. But over the long term uh, scheme of things, you know, like he was saying in this video, if you watch this whole video, uh, it's on Altcoin Daily's YouTube channel. If you want to go there, I'll try to remember to put the link in this video. It's a very interesting video. He's got a 20, like a 19 or 20 minute lecture on this. And you know, basically he talks about how the kids that are being born today, by the time they're an adult or, you know, they won't even know what a bank is because no one will be using the bank. So that's pretty much what I got for this video, guys. I hope that helps you. Feel confident in where you're at in the crypto markets. I think we're still very early. Whether we get a big correction or not by the halving really doesn't matter in the long-term scheme of things. So kind of keep that in mind. Don't let corrections in the market, if we get one, scare you out of your bags. Uh, try not to panic sell because eventually, likely if we get a big correction in Bitcoin for some reason, the market's been really bullish and it's holding a lot better than I had expected it to. But uh, if we get some kind of big correction, you know that's the time... For me personally to invest more money while the prices are lower because it's probably not going to last very long more than a few months usually unless we get some kind of really catastrophic event but even with uh covid you know we had a big crash in crypto everything went way down and then right after that we took off again into the bull run so uh but that's pretty much what i got for this video guys i appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel make sure you hit that like button for the youtube algorithm and we'll see you on the next video Thank you.